Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. As we continue along with this season of Pentecost during these summer days, um, our, our theme for this week is finding rest in Christ. And so we begin our worship this day in the name of the one who created us, Jesus Christ who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Amen. And our, our gospel for this week is according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. And uh, it's verses 16 through 19 and then 25 through 30. Jesus proclaims, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and have revealed them to in infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so the title of our message for this day um, is Come Away With Me, You Who Are Weary and Carrying Heavy Burdens, and I Will Give You Rest. And let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So, last night um, I had a dream and I woke up from the dream and the, the title for today's message came to me. Um, and it's really a combination of two very similar passages. It's a combination of today's passage from Matthew 11, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And Mark 6.31, where Jesus says, Come away with me to a quiet place and rest a while. And in the dream, the two verses were conflated, so I am going with what was given to me in the dream. But, but kind of the meaning behind both is that Jesus invites you and invites me, particularly when we are weary or carrying heavy burdens, 
to come away with him to a quiet place and to rest a while. And so I'd like to invite you to think about what is that quiet place for you? Um, for me, it is often this little grove of trees I'm sitting in, which is just five minutes from my home. Um, and so what is that, that um, place where you go when you're feeling weary and need um, to find some rest. I um, received a, a real gift this week. I just got back from such a place and um, I just got back from a place uh, in Oak Bluffs, Martha's Vineyard, where I was invited to come and preach and lead some Bible studies at a place where I, I, I didn't even know it existed. I, I had never been there before. I'd been to Martha's Vineyard many times, many years ago, but um, this is a place called Martha's Vineyard Camp Meeting Association. And I didn't even know it was there. I knew Oak Bluffs, and you, you, you will be, one minute you'll be on Circuit Ave, which is this busy, bustling street with lots of shops and restaurants and noise and people and crowds and blazing heat and, and a hot, bright, sunny day. And one minute you're walking along with all this commotion. And then the next minute you go through this kind of this passageway, this door, and there you enter, um, you go down this path, and you're in this community of this Martha's Vineyard Camp Meeting Association. And it comes out of, in the period of our U.S. history, what was called the Second Great Awakening. And um, it was basically in the 1800s, the mid-1800s, this kind of camp uh, revival movement. Remember the tent revivals? It came out of the Methodist Church where they'd, um, a preacher, uh, they would, would, would speak and they'd have a big tent in the center and people, church folk, would come from all over and they would pitch tents in a circle around the major tent where the preacher was. And for usually a week, sometimes two weeks, there would be preaching and Bible study and people would just take time away from it all to tend to their souls, right? And, um, and after maybe 20 years or so, the wives said, you know, we enjoy this very much, but we need better accommodations. <laughs> this camping is, is tiresome. And so they began to build these simple little structures, these, these lovely little cottages. And um, Oak Bluffs, Martha's Vineyard, is famous for these little gingerbread co cottages that began to form a circle around the, where, the main gathering place and then little concentric circles around that where different church communities would set up. And then in the late 1800s, they decided to build something that's magnificent. It's called the Tabernacle. And um, it's just this brilliant uh, structure of amazing, like really brilliant engineering and design. And it has a roof of wrought iron and it's made of wrought iron, but there's no sides. Um, so they call it the tabernacle and today it's still used for worship during the summer months and concerts and social gatherings and this whole community is like this um, oasis in the midst of the busy bustling days of Oaks Bluff. You, you get out of the traffic you go down this little path on this hot, noisy day, and it's shady and green, 
and um, just this beautiful, um, peaceful, harmonious community. And so that's the kind of place, if you will, that Jesus is inviting us to when he says, come away with me to a quiet place and rest a while. So thank you to the good community of uh, Martha's Vineyard Camp Meeting Association with whom I spent the past week in worship and Bible study and for the, the peace and the tranquility I found among you. Um, but I invite all of us listeners to think about what is your place? What is your place when you're feeling weary and heavily burdened? What is your place where you go? At the Church Beyond the Walls today, one person said, the beach, the ocean. Another person said, well, I have a bench in a park that's next to a, a stream, a river, and that's where I go. Um, I thought of this place, this grove of trees, of, of which this is just one tree. Um, but I invite you for a moment to just think, what is your place? And perhaps in these summer months, if you're feeling weary and heavily burdened, maybe you should hear Christ's invitation to you to come away to a quiet place to rest a while. Now the second word I want us, wanted us to focus on is quiet, quiet. It's really um, almost glaring how you'll be on Circuit Ave one moment with all the noise and the cars and the people shouting and just, you know, the noisiness. And then you go down that little pathway into this shady, spot with these glorious trees and green grass and this tabernacle and it's so quiet there's like this um, beautiful sheltering quiet and I feel um, I get a newsletter I don't I don't know who signed me up for this but I'm deeply grateful and it's, I get one every month, and it's from a group called the Friends of Silence. And sort of their, their little motto is, it says on the newsletter, is there enough silence for the word to be heard? Is there enough silence for the word to be heard? And I invite you to think about your own life and the the noise and how sometimes we even you know fill our lives with noise um, but throughout history all of the the great saints and holy ones and Jesus himself we're told he would get up early every morning and he would go up into the hills to spend time alone to withdraw from the crowds and to be alone with his God in prayer. My husband and I have an ongoing battle because he's a real TV guy. <laughs> he loves television and I like quiet. I could live the rest of my life without ever watching television again. Um, so, uh, so we made a bargain. <laughs> And um, first thing in the morning, I get up very early, get up quite a bit before he does, and there's just quiet first thing in the morning. So that's when I have my morning prayer. That's when I sit with God's word and with prayer and do some spiritual reading, some study and prayer and meditation. That's my quiet time. And then later in the day, he can turn on his television. But I invite you to think about your own life. And if you fill it with noise, and perhaps if you can hear Jesus' invitation to come away to a quiet place, and to spend some time in quiet, 
so that there is enough silence for the word to be heard. Now, a third word I'd like us to focus on from today's passage it is really a couple of words, and it's weary and heavily burdened or carrying heavy burdens. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Um, one of the Bible studies we had in Martha's Vineyard under the tabernacle is the story of the woman at the well. And if you read that passage, what, what struck me so deeply about it is it said about Jesus himself, it said, and Jesus, fatigued by the journey, sat down by the well. And I remember several months ago in my morning prayer, I read that, that was the passage for the day. And I just sat with that for like an hour and prayed with it and meditated with it. And I actually wept because I thought I was feeling so deeply weary. And it, it struck me that even Jesus felt weary. Jesus was fatigued from the journey. So it's funny that this little passage about come unto me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, all you who are fatigued, this passage always comes to us in the month of July. And that's a month when many people take vacation. And um, I really feel that, you know, we talk about vacation as a time of R&R, &R, right? Rest and renewal. Or some people say rest and rejuvenation, rest and recreation. And look at that word, recreation. Um, the whole idea of Sabbath is so important in the Bible, beginning in the very first chapter, where it talks about the seven days of creation. And on the seventh day, God rests. And it really um, shows us that woven into this pattern of the earth and of creation itself is this idea of Sabbath rest. And that if we fool ourselves and think we can go through life without rest, we're just, we're going against, you know, creation itself. Uh, in ancient times, every seventh year, every Sabbath year, seventh year, they would let all of the fields just lie there, just be fallow, because it gave the fields um, time to just rejuvenate and all the nutrients were able to be restored. And then the, the field that following year would be more fruitful, more abundant, and think of how foolish we are when we just think we can work, 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 work without ever taking that time to rest, to, to replenish, to literally restore, rejuvenate. We can even be more fruitful, but only if we take that time. I had a colleague, a clergy colleague years ago who prided himself on the fact that he never took a day off. But I would look at him and he was pale and he, he um, looked weary all the time and he was, you know, overweight and just like slumped around through life. And I thought, 
See, this is what happens when we don't rejuvenate, when we don't take time to replenish and restore. So, come away, come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, okay? And I will give you rest, Sabbath rest. Um, our fifth point um, for today, I always have seven points, seven being the bi biblical number for fullness and wholeness. Fifth point is this passage begins with Jesus saying, to what shall I compare this generation? And he compares it to a bunch of children who are shouting in the marketplace like, we played a happy tune for you and you didn't dance. We played a sad tune for you and you didn't mourn. Like, what's wrong with you people? And, um, and then he says, For John the Baptist came who did not eat or drink, and the people complained about him and criticized him and said, Oh, what's wrong with this guy? He must have a demon. And then Jesus came along did eat and did drink and did enjoy life and celebrate with people and again people complained about him and said oh this guy he's a glutton and a drunkard and he hangs out with sinners and and so Jesus says but I tell you wisdom which is one of the names for God wisdom is justified is proven by all her children you know so we see this world this crazy world we were talking about this at Bible study today where there's so much negativity and so many people who are really miserable and complaining about so many things you know they're not dancing to the joyful song they're not mourning to the sad song they're criticizing people for being too strict like John the Baptist or too lax like they thought Jesus was like nothing pleases them that's what it comes down to and Jesus talks about how the children get it the children get it and he says you know I thank you God that you've hidden these these life lessons from the wise and the learned and revealed them to children and then he says come unto me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest and so part of my rest and rejuvenation is truly oh, I always find it when I spend some time with children. I'm so excited my grandchildren are coming in a couple of days and we'll go to the beach. And nothing restores the spirit more than uh, making sand castles at the beach. Um, I can get lost in, in that process of just making, we, we call them drizzle castles, where you take the wet sand and you just kind of tower it up <laughs> and it looks like drizzle <laughs> that's what we call it I can do that for hours and you the t you lose track of the time and at the end you know you didn't really do anything but you feel re renewed and restored and children lose themselves in play right and psychologists have actually done studies that show that when we can just set ourselves aside when we can lose ourselves for a few hours like children in play when we can do that in nature like in this place or through art through creating something artistic or musical or or building sand castles, just something that takes us outside of ourselves and our worries and our burdens. 
then truly we are renewed and restored. So, if you're feeling weary and fatigued, burdened and heavy laden, I hope you can hear Jesus's words to you this summer and perhaps um, answer his invitation to come away with him and rest a while. And perhaps you'll be as blessed as I was to get an invitation and go someplace like Martha's Vineyard. Or perhaps you'll just find a little place like this near your home where there's some quiet and green grass and peaceful, calm trees. But sisters and brothers, we know that um, we don't really have to go very far, do we? Um, because Jesus, um, in, our, in, in Scripture we're told that each and every one of us is created in the Imago Dei, in the image and likeness of God. So we have God within us. So one beautiful Christian woman at Church Beyond the Walls, when I asked, where do you go? Where's your place to go away with Christ, away with God? You know what she said? She said, I just come to God in prayer and with my Bible, and that's my place. So you see, sisters and brothers, you really don't have to go any further than your Bible, than a quiet corner in your home or at that bench in a public park. Wherever you go, Christ calls us to come to him. And we know that when we go through the word and through prayer and meditation, when we go within ourselves, we're coming to that quiet place where God dwells. One of my favorite mystics is Teresa of Avila, and she wrote a beautiful book called The Interior Castle. And she talks about when we go within ourselves, God invites us to go deeper, deeper, deeper within ourselves. And again, she speaks of seven dwelling places. We talked about seven as the biblical number for fullness, completion, wholeness. And when you get to that seventh place, the, the first and the second, the outer layers are a little more noisy. <laughs> but when you get to that seventh place, there is God and there indeed we find that peace and that rest that Christ invites us to. So this day, may you come unto Christ, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and may you know the rest that only he can give. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.